Good afternoon, or whenever you are watching this, and welcome to Worship on the Water, Sundays at 6, our weekly worship gathering. This week, due to cold temperatures, we won't be gathering in person. The next few weeks, we will have a series of guest preachers filling in. Next week, you will not want to miss it because Reverend Carol Gehring, who is a former pastor of this church and also former district superintendent, she will be giving the message. And the week after that, her husband, Reverend David Gehring, also a retired United Methodist elder, will be preaching. Would you pray with me? O oh Lord God, sower of seeds, God who plants your word within us so that it can grow, so that we can bear fruit to nourish our hungry world, speak to us today. And God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of each and every heart be pleasing in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So our scripture will come from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, and I'm going to start at verse 1, um, read through 9, and then skip down a little bit. Let's hear the word of the Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. But other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. 
As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. said to me recently that they do not like getting plants as gifts. They said, the problem with a plant as a gift is that a plant is a gift that requires homework. <laughs> I love that. I received a plant as a gift this year from my friend Carter, uh, who thankfully provided good instructions on what the plant is, how to take care of the plant and everything. I loved it because after all, I do love homework. I am not a gardener, but I do come from a family of gardeners. When I was a kid, we were a strawberry growing family and a zucchini and green bean and tomato growing family. These are things that we did not buy at the Kroger on Route 60. I remember my parents going to southern states to buy the plants that they planted out in the backyard. My mom grew so many zucchini that for a while, I think that she rang neighbors' doorbells, deposited the zucchini, and then drove away quickly, kind of a ding-dong dash in a different kind of way. I do remember that my family loved strawberry picking. I could eat them just straight from the ground or, you know, cut up with some sugar and some Ready Whip. We would pick them and they would go clink, 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 the sound of the strawberries in the metal bowl that we used for strawberry picking. Clink, clink, clink. It was hot. We were excited for shortcake. It was one of those wonderful, blissful, idyllic moments until this one afternoon in which there was clink, 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 and then scream. The bowl. You heard the sound of the bowl dropping you heard the sound of feet running. What on earth had happened? There was no shortcake that one summer day. There was a snake in the strawberry plants. Thankfully, we got out in time, the strawberry pickers. We thought, oh my goodness, all of our strawberries are just sitting there rotting, but nobody wanted to go up and confront the snake in the strawberry plants. It was maybe the next week when we were out picking strawberries again that someone decided to poke the snake with a stick. The snake, after all, was in the very same location as it had been the week before. Was it dead? 
Was it a very chill snake? What was happening here? And so as we got closer, we poked it and it did not move. And then as we got closer still, we saw that it had a glossy sheen, almost plasticky to it. And then someone remembered the year before. The birds had gotten very bad in the strawberries. And so one day we had gone to the store and gotten a plastic snake. Maybe we had won it with tickets at Billy Bob's Pizza Wonderland, our local Chuck E. Cheese type place. Maybe we had bought it at Toys R Us. I don't know where, but we had bought a plastic snake to scare off the birds. Who knows? Maybe it had scared off a few birds. But then the plastic snake lurked there in the grass for 12 plus months, waiting for an unsuspecting turner to pick strawberries. I am not sure if it scared off any birds, but it sure did scare us. Plants are a gift. And they're a gift that requires a little bit of work. I was thinking about this work of gardening and a word came to my mind over and over this week, cultivate, cultivation. <laughs> the word for cultivate is the same root. It's related to the word culture. <laughs> I was thinking about that, both things that we tend, the actions that we do, the words that we speak, create the worlds that we live in. It's one of those things we don't think very often, those of us who are not farmers, about cultivation. Well, maybe until um, plant person became the new cat person. That is what I've heard. The writer and pastor Andy Crouch writes in a book called Culture Making about the links between culture and cultivation. He says that in the past, Farmer's work demanded great attention to the soil, plants, and creatures in their care. It required sensitivity, changes, attention to the changes in condition that could mark the beginning of an illness, the onset of a crop disease, an outbreak of weeds. In fact, even the word husband seems to come from an old Norse word for someone who lived on and cultivated the soil suggesting that the intimacy and responsibility of relationships were made most clear by comparing them to the life of a farmer. Andy Crouch says this, one who cultivates tries to create the most fertile conditions for good things to survive and thrive. Cultivating also requires weeding, sorting out what does and does not belong, what will bear fruit and what will choke it out. Cultivating requires reading. Weeding <laughs> requires maybe taking dead things and turning them into compost to make rich and fertile soil so that the plants that bear good fruit can grow. I wonder about what we are cultivating <laughs> in this year 2020 and this new year 2021. I think about the words that we speak and how they cultivate the soil of our hearts, of our lives, of our families, of our churches, of our country. I, um, as many of you have been missing just being in the sanctuary for worship, but you're in the sanctuary right now, Christina. Yes, I am. <laughs> Me and Ryan Mansbury and the donkeys and the sheep cutouts. But it's not being in the sanctuary for worship. I've thought about the ways in which the language that I've been speaking maybe creates the world that I've been living in. In this year that we haven't been able to go to church, not in the traditional ways at least. The writer Rick Warren wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Purpose Driven Church. And I heard from a friend that there was a conversation near the beginning of the pandemic when churches uh, were closing their doors for the health and love of our neighbors. And so many churches felt that they were floundering. Rick Warren said, what could a church do if they couldn't gather at 11 a.m. for worship? And Rick Warren didn't negate the fact that it is so, so important for our Christian life to meet together, that we miss it so much, that we want to get that vaccine in as many arms as we can, as soon as we can, so that we can be back loving each other. But Rick Warren 
should say this, something that I've heard over and over from many of our leaders and disciples and staff and cultivators here at Wrightsville, that if the purpose of your church is to meet and sit in a pew one hour a week on 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning, then yes, it has shut down. But if your purpose is something different, if going to church is something different than being the church, then maybe your purpose hasn't been thwarted at all. It depends on the way you use your words, the way you use your thoughts, what you cultivate. This parable has always been weird to me. I love the idea of God just throwing out seeds, just scattering them everywhere. It seems like, you know, you wouldn't necessarily put seeds on a path or put seeds in the thorny ground. Even I, in my amateur gardening um, knowledge, know that. We call it grace. God's favor that we cannot earn and that we cannot lose. God's presence, that God is indiscriminate. God never stops seeking us. God will never stop seeking us. God is spreading God's good news of salvation and mercy and love and God's presence, the good news that Jesus is saving the world. And God will spread that anywhere, <laughs> not just in the fertile soil of people waiting and cultivating and watching, but in every single one of our hearts. God, however, is a mystery. God never forces us to follow Jesus. God can turn scorched earth into fertile soil. And I wonder if this passage maybe is calling us, however, to cultivate that soil in our lives, to get our hands dirty doing it. A couple weeks ago, I was having a conversation on one of my um, text threads with some of my fellow preacher friends. Uh, if you're wondering who is the person that, uh, you know, is the preacher to the preacher, it's usually each other. <laughs> I was talking about how I miss being here so much. I was having a conversation about worship. It, maybe it was last week, the week before, maybe six months ago. What is time anymore? I was thinking about how sometimes it was hard for me to get as much out of it virtually. Right? It's not the same to sing and have my, you know, creaky alto just singing along to How Great Thou Art in my living room with my cat. It's not the same as hearing Julia playing the organ and surrounded by 300 other beautiful voices. I said, I get distracted. I was like, I just don't know if I'm getting a lot out of it. And my friend very kindly and lovingly and with a tiny bit of good-natured snark and perhaps a well-placed emoji or two reminded me of a quote that they had heard. He said, you know, it's okay if you don't get a ton out of worship all the time because we're not worshiping you. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> I said, man, I hate it when other people remind me of good theology. We're not worshiping me. <laughs> And I thought maybe my friend, my neighbor, my brother in Christ was cultivating that fertile soil of my heart, of my soul, of my life. He was removing a rock, a thorn, <laughs> maybe taking that shallow soil of the path and adding in some compost a little step towards some more fertile soil so that I could hear the good news, the word of God. Friends, this is the time to tend the soil, the soil of our souls, the soil of our lives, the good soil of community. We wear green a couple times a year, and green is this color of growing, thinking about growing in Christ, even when it is cold outside. We add nutrients to the soil of our souls. We offer our dead and dying things to the God who turns dead things into compost so that we can bear fruit 10, 100, 1,000 fold. What is it that we are called to cultivate? Sometimes I think we think it's positive thinking, but I don't know that that's necessarily it. Scripture, however, talks about the fruit of the Spirit the virtues that spring from a life that we live in friendship with Jesus, the way that a plant in good soil produces fruit. I was thinking this this week about these scriptures from Galatians chapter five. Paul writes, by contrast, the fruit of the spirit 
is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. You can't wake up one day and decide, man, I am going to master self-control today, or today I am going to be gentle. I mean, you can try, but these are things that God grows within us by planting God's word in our lives. But there are steps that we can take to cultivate the soil in which the plants that bear that fruit can grow. I think a lot about those verses, but this week I read the verses that came before the fruits of the Spirit. Paul talks about what he calls the works of the flesh, and it's sort of like the shadow side to the fruit of the Spirit. The works of the flesh doesn't mean like that the body is bad, although as you can see from the band-aid on my arm, I, uh, sometimes we, we cut ourselves or burn ourselves while cooking soup. But the flesh that Paul talks about means the sinful life that we live apart from God, the lives we live that make us do things that have that gross feeling in the pit of our stomachs, you know, the one. Paul writes, for you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become servants of one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if, and these are the kind of shadow virtues to the fruit of the Spirit. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, that means doing whatever you want. Idolatry, worshiping something above God. Sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. The gift of the gospel life that God sows into our lives indiscriminately like seed that is a gift that only God can give us. But yet it is a gift that requires cultivation, that requires work from turning away from the strife and jealousy and anger, impurity, enmities, envy, drunkenness, carousing, all of those things and turning towards the gifts of the Spirit. That gift of community that God gives us is a gift that requires work. I wonder, friends, if something that God is calling us to cultivate is the use of the word and. <laughs> Pastor Christina, I know what the word and means, you say, and, you know, that's good. I think a lot of times we hear this phrase, but what about? We think that valuing one thing or believing one thing is, you know, exclusive to believing something else. And I wonder if God is calling us to cultivate and kind of thinking. Maybe that is the way that we can tear some of these rocks and thorns out of our soil so that we can hear the voice of the gospel. And. You can feel doubt, despair, and fear and choose to walk in faith, hope, and love. You can trust that God forgives you and others and choose to take responsibility for your actions. Say you're sorry repent. You can pursue the things that Jesus desires and seek to do them in the way that Jesus did them. <laughs> you can be called to prayer and putting one foot in front of another, worship and work, service and Sabbath rest. You can 
blow off some steam, put pen to paper or hand to keyboard and get out some of your anger and maybe choose not to send that letter, that email, remembering that the person on the other end is a beloved child of God, made in God's image with hurts and worries that you may not know. You can disagree vehemently, socially, theologically, politically, and not burn a relationship down. You can have the best of intentions, do the best you can, and realize that you have messed up and say you are sorry. You can recognize that we are called to stand up against evil and injustice and oppression and recognize that while Jesus sometimes turned over tables, more often he sat around them. I love that word and. We could just keep going. You can wake up in the morning or the middle of the night flooded with anxiety about what tomorrow might bring. And you can choose to breathe a simple prayer. Be still and know that I am God. You can be deeply grateful for your church, your country, your community, your family, your school, and honestly look at how it can be better. You can feel incredible anger and recognize that anger often comes with friends, sadness, loneliness, and hurts. You can love deeply and set healthy boundaries when you need to. You can be scared and speak or act when you need to. You can be scared and stay quiet or still when you need to. You can love someone dearly and say when their actions are harmful. You can choose not to call someone out, but to call them in. You can be called to good work and find that it is incredibly difficult, especially right now when nothing is easy. You can rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. You can give thanks for the fact that we do not plant the seeds of the gospel into the world, only God does. And we can cultivate that earth into good soil. You can be grateful to God that you are not perfect, only God is. And you can do the hard work by hand, plucking up those thorns, digging out those pesky rocks or pebbles like my friend did to me, seeing when soil is shallow and choosing to cultivate soil that is rich and fertile, the soil in which the life of the gospel can grow, in which community can be built, and so that our, com that our whole community, our state, our world can see us living out the good news. It's a gift. And it's a gift that requires some work. Last year, our staff and leaders um, had a program called uh, Vision 2020. We thought we were real cute when we put this together back before we knew what 2020 would mean. Everybody in town was thinking about our 2020 vision. We acknowledge the fact that growing in faith does not happen by accident. It happens intentionally. It happens through um, letting God draw us together in community, not just by talking about community, but letting God use us together for a common goal all of us across lines of race or ethnicity, across lines of um, politics, across lines of geography. Hey, right now, we have folks worshiping with our church who are here in Wrightsville Beach and Wilmington and also folks all around the country, all around the world. I think that many of us thought the turning of a calendar from 2020 to 2021 was perhaps a hopeful thing as vaccines uh, were being distributed. Some of us just needed to not write that year anymore. But the turning of a calendar from 2020 to 2021 will not solve the virus or homelessness or folks who feel anxious or helpless or lonely or without purpose. Just Turning a calendar page doesn't solve poverty or our deep need to know and live the way of Jesus. Turning a calendar page will not solve the fact that sometimes we have come to see ourselves and each other as walking billboards for our religion or our political party and not human beings with families and loves and hurts and pain. 
Turning calendar doesn't solve the racism and white supremacy that we keep rooting out and identifying in our hearts and our lives and our communities. It doesn't solve the fact that we are now empty nesters or retirees or widows or widowers and we have a lot of love to give but are not quite sure where to pour that out. There's a whole lot of things that just turning a page won't solve. But cultivating, cultivating, that is something that can make the soil of our hearts something to where God can sow the good seeds of the gospel. Have you ever heard the kids song? I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is the people. You can sing along with me if you want. The church is not just any people. It's the people that Jesus has redeemed by dying and rising again. And it's the people who he gave the mission of spreading the gospel to be disciples and to make disciples. And we can do that anywhere, anyhow. Going to church might be about a location, but being the church is not something that you've got to do. It's something that you get to do, something that you do with your hands your hands that reach up, that reach out, that reach across, that reach within, that reach towards. And so every season in 2021, we are gonna be inviting you to be the church together in a different way. Each of these practices will be something that God does through us together at Riceville. In each of these ways, we believe that God is going to transform us and transform our world and cultivate our spirits with the good seeds of the gospel. And so now until the beginning of Lent, we are inviting you to join together with your brothers and sisters by reaching up in worship. Think about your hands. You, maybe, maybe I'll turn it over so you can't see my band-aid. Um, reaching up in worship. Maybe that will be in the park or worship on the water if it's warm enough and you are able, or maybe virtually like it is today. If you're like me, it will not be the same as being here gathered. Some weeks you might not feel like you get a lot out of it, but each time we show up and worship, each time we reach our hands up, God removes one of those thorns or pesky pebbles from the soil of our lives so the good seed can grow. And so let's let God cultivate something new in us. Let's be that good soil. Let's be the church. These next few weeks, they're reaching up in worship. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. In this country that we love, we offer our prayers for a safe and orderly transition of power. We pray for Joe Biden, who will take the oath of office as president of our country. And we pray for Kamala Harris, who will take the oath of office as vice president. We pray that the abundance of grace and strength and truth and love will be poured out upon them and those who counsel them in the days ahead. We pray for all who have been injured or traumatized in violence. We pray for healing for all who have been hurt, and we pray for the families of those who have lost their lives. We pray for the Congress of the United States, for the House of Representatives and the Senate, and for all who have been elected to serve in this area of public well-being. We pray for a new sense of community in our nation, and we pray that we will be used by God to be bearers of the peace of Christ. We pray that we will have wisdom to bring people together, to listen wisely, and to create a peaceable community wherever we find ourselves. Our Father, who art in heaven, sia santificato il tuo nome. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
this year, friends, I believe God is calling us to cultivate, to do that hard, dirty, messy work by hand so that the seed of the gospel can grow. Last fall, we distributed signs that said, love your neighbor. <laughs> some of them are still up. We see them in yards. And the other day, I ran in quick for some Brussels sprouts and ice cream, as you do to the Publix in Pine Valley. And I saw the sign there right by the entrance. It was a witness, but also a reminder to me about who I am and what I've been here to do. And so in 2021, we believe that we at Riceville are going to continue to love our neighbor by being the church, a church that is, um, we love and miss our building and our beautiful sanctuary. And also we are called to be the church, even when we can't be in the church. And so in, for this next couple weeks until February 17th, Ash Wednesday, we are inviting you to every week to reach up in worship, either worship in the park, worship on the water, if weather allows, or by viewing one of our online services, morning worship or worship on the water. We believe that what we, when we worship, God is transforming us. And maybe even if you're worshiping virtually like today, maybe you can make some intentional steps to making that seed sink deeper into your heart. Maybe you can gather your family or set a time with a friend to watch worship together and set, press play at the same time. Um, don't just be an observer. Pass the peace when it's time. If the acolyte lights the candles in the sanctuary, take a candle and light it on your table too. Write your check during our offering music or make an online donation then. Get out your Bible or your Bible app and read along. Sing along with the hymns, say the Lord's Prayer, and during the prayer time, pray for the day that we will be gathered together again. Hey, if you want to, you can dress up, although I will be at um, Couch Church with my coffee and fuzzy slippers. If you're like me, it will not be the same as being here gathered. But maybe through that, God can remove one of those thorns or pesky pebbles from the soil of your life so that that good seed of the gospel can grow. Go in peace, friends.